Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Jagalia Lost video. I'm recording this for the third time because I've messed up that badly. Uh, today's video, we're going to be going over the Nyx Summon Showcase, which is Divine Deception, featuring the two new units, uh, Ferris, the Adventurer, and the Dragon Gabriel. I'm going to be going over, give my thoughts about them, read what they do. Uh, that's going to be today's video, so if you end up liking it, you can leave a like. Comment, tell me if you're actually summoning on this banner, and subscribe to me if you want more videos featuring me. Now, the reason I say if you're actually summoning, because I actually am kind of curious, because, you know, 2.5 year anniversary is coming near the end of the month. Everyone knows that. Um, or at least a good fact, a good portion of the people actually know that. So it actually kind of makes me curious how they handle these the, the dragon and the adventure because they have to be really good or they have to be fan favorites if people want to summon to you know bait people into summoning for them um, so we'll see how it is so first thing we got we got paris who is a long range mana caster yeah uh, he's one of the apostles of the northern Italian church uh, stern in demeanor, he has a penchant for grading everything numerically. He bears Uriel's sigil and strives to meet the angel's expectations through his unflagging efforts in the pursuit of perfection. The first time I read this, I read Angel as Angle, and I said unflagging as unflaging. So, <laughs> well, to be fair, I thought it was like flagged, flat. You know, have you ever heard of the, the church thing that some extremely devote people do where they like beat themselves with stuff? It was in the Da Vinci Code. Anyway. First move he's got here, the Carbunculus Belletto? Carc? Listen, you know I'm very bad with pronouncing words. It's a staple of mine at this point, unfortunately. I have no idea how you say this word, so I'm gonna try. Carbunculus Balietto, shareable six, deals damage to enemies in a line and inflicts Scorunge during Sigil's release. This skill also inflicts Uriel's Wrath debuff. Uriel's Wrath has three progressively more powerful levels. Level 1 for 15 seconds, reduce strength <laughs> by 15%. I'm also kind of sick. Level 2 for 15 seconds, reduce strength by 20%. But it's not that, you know, I don't have Corona, hopefully. Level 3 for 10 seconds, reduce strength by 30%. And scorage resistance by 20 Wow! Scorage resistance by 20%. If Uriel. I guess only at level 3, though. Um, if Uriel's Wrath is inflicted while already active, it will be raised by one level. Conversely, it will be lowered one level when the effect remaining time is depleted. If the effect is at level one, when this time is depleted, it will instead be removed entirely. Okay. There's the damage for you. Okay. Prudence knowledge. Grants it uses the Uriel's Blessing effect. Yeah, okay. Special effects. Reflexive evasion. Charges three. Does not stack. Gauge Acceleration 20% is his co op ability. His chain co op ability is HP 80% equals wind resistance 6%. Okay. Only activates when they're 80% or above. Weird. I mean, it would also be weird if it was 80% or below, but whatever. Inflicts the Lock Sigil debuff. This is his uh, first ability, Uriel's Covenant 2. Inflicts the Lock Sigil debuff on the user at the start of quest for 300 seconds. It grants the user a unique force strike. While charging this force strike, if the user is hit by an attack, they can be avoided with the damage immunity provided by skills. They will automatically dodge the attack, deal flame damage to enemies in the line, and inflict them with Uriel's Wrath debuff. Lock Sigil's remaining time will be reduced by 36 seconds each time the user dodges an attack. After activating, this effect will not activate again for 10 seconds. When the Lock Sigil's effect wears off, the user will be granted the Sigil's released effect instead. Sigil's released increase damage of score range enemies by 35%, damage dealt by standard attacks and four strikes, and the amount of skill gauges are filled by standard attacks and four strikes. It also increases the user's skill gauge fill rate by 12% when they have Uriel's Blessing effect. Sleep resistance 100%. Is his second skill, and his last skill is Uriel's Judgment 2. It inflicts an attacking enemy with the Uriel's Wrath debuff when the user dodges an enemy's attack. After activating this ability, you want to activate again for 15 seconds. So he's kind of built very interestingly. They're still trying to make these kind of units, which of course it seems like every single church unit is going to have this specific mechanic. And I'm not sure how I feel about this mechanic, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Just like the idea of just like being so locked down. It's one thing if you're locked down by like something and then you do something to unlock it like um, like the most recent Valentine's Day unit that released that I'm not remembering so forgive me because 
my head is like, <laughs> when I, if I'm not summoning for them, I have to remove all knowledge of them from my mind or else I'll be tempted. Um, but I guess there is a way to kind of type this down. I guess it's just something in me where I feel like the the way it, it takes way too long for to get it, but the reason it takes so long is because it, it, it is, in theory, extremely good. And I do like his skill 1, I do like that at level 3 it lowers resistance, which is kind of nice. And it's shareable, so that makes me think that... Oh. Okay, no, it would still work out. Because I was about to say, but would it work out? Because... No, it would, because it would still inflict Uriel's Wrath, but at that point it would be super... Mm, it would take too long <laughs> to get the mill by the time... Depending on how long the debuff lasts, which I think it actually tells you right here, it only lasts 15 seconds. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Because my current thought is that none none of these units that with this specific mechanic have ever super driven me. Maybe it's just because I'm a very basic player. But for maybe people who would rather have like a challenge to what they do or like some kind of extra steps into how they play, maybe it's all for them. I don't know. Different strokes, different folks. It's not that I'm saying that he's bad. It's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know if I want to like play in that specific way. I want to play, well, first of all, I want to play with him. So <laughs> that's kind of the part where this kind of all falls apart, is that um, I don't know if the AI would be able to play him to the way that they would like, but whatever. That's him. Tell me how you feel about him. If you feel if you feel extremely strongly about him, I would love to hear your breakdown of it. So here's Gabriel, one of the dragons known as the Five Archangels. But though gentle and free-spirited, she is strong and dauntless at her core. She feels a motherly love for Pinon, who I called Peony in the previous video, but nobody called me on it. Thank you very much. Her sigil worn apostle that occasionally borders on more protectiveness. Hmm. May my wing counter blessing upon you. Angelic devotion deals water damage to enemies on the line and inflicts frostbite. Alright, cool. Frostbite lasts, lasts 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds. Abilities, water strength 60%. Water Gabriel's favorite too. If the user is attuned to water, activate the Gabriel's love effect, where their HP is restored. Gabriel's love increases strength by 10% and defense by 50% and grants one use shield that nullifies damage by 10%. The user's maximum HP. The shield can stack with ordinary shields. Gabriel's love will not stack. The effects are lost upon taking damage, and after activating this effect, will not aggregate again for 10 seconds. Okay. I think that's um, kind of useful for, <laughs> I guess, for autoing. <laughs> Uh, because in my mind, I'm like, I think that would be... And it's not a, an insult, honestly. I actually think that there should be dragons that are specifically better when you have control over them, and then other dragons who are just better to give to someone that either you're not controlling or is a second unit, and they can take advantage of that, you know, 50% debuff. Not 50% debuff. 50% defense. Um, especially on some of the harder, harder stuff, where sometimes it can be a little bit touch and go if you have enough defense to actually keep your guy alive or something. It'd be nice to have that there. But that's kind of how I currently feel. It feels like someone that you want to have... Yeah. It feels like someone you would want to slap on there who would be your second, like, DPS this, not your main DPS on the main rotation. At least that's how I currently feel about her. It's a little bit weird to be a water dragon in this meta, because either you're the bunny, or you're Gallop Poseidon. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, they kind of messed up by making the GameCube bunnies, G and C, um, because they're just too good. Almost every single water unit uses them to a kind of... Uh, for a second, that every single water unit... You don't have to be water to use them for whatever specific reason you're looking for. They're built that stupid. So I never really have a feeling of what water actually needs, because for the most part it seems like the answer is they just need the bunnies. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of like, how would I use her? And that's kind of how I would use her. That's how I play. So it's probably not the most efficient, but you know, whatever. It's my way of playing. But yeah, those are my thoughts. I, again, I am not going to be summoning because I am in super save mode. Until recently when someone in the comments of the previous video told me like, oh hey, remember how they always do collabs with these digests? Specifically for the for the 0.5 anniversaries? And I was like, shit, <laughs> I completely forgot. So it's back to saving for me. 
so I'm gonna have to unfortunately skip this. But if you want to summon on this banner, I wish you the best of luck, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out. And have a good day, too. See you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye.